Uh, good morning and welcome to this virtual bridge session. And there's no more important stakeholder in further and higher education than the student. And today we're going to explore ways in which student associations and in some ways student unions as well from, from higher education um, can uh, uh, contribute to uh, the, the experience and how we can make best use of associations and unions in that. I'm pleased to have Andrew Smurthwaite and Elena Semple with us this morning. And it's over to Andrew. Thank you very much, Jason. Yes, so uh, I'm Andrew. I'm the student president of the Fourth Valley Student Association, and I'll hand over to Elena. Uh, hi there, I'm Elena Semple. I'm the activities and volunteer coordinator for our little student association. Yeah, so uh, give me just one second to bring the slides up. Great. So, uh, Fourth Valley Student Association, uh, I'll tell you about, a bit about us. So we're a award-winning body uh, that ensure the student voice is at the forefront of everything we do. We will be on tokenistic actions that sometimes student representatives, such as myself, find themselves, such as invitations to sit on college committees, but not really listening to the student input. We do this by training and developing our student sabbatical officers. They're the full-time student officers in charge of strategic development of the student association to become confident and diplomatic student leaders. As leaders, they look after the student executive committee and class reps and help pass on the sense of confidence in being an expert in their education as much need as and much needed confidence to speak out when necessary. In spite of all this, our work transcends much further than just representative objectives. But we also endeavor to be the platform for students to develop meaningful relationships with their community within the college and out with. So to kick this off, I'll tell you a little bit about my journey and how I discovered what the Student Association could do for me as a student. So a bit about my journey through I started in a level five access to computing course. I was a very shy person. I wanted to make friends, but kind of struggled to find people. In, uh, in that year, uh, there was a club that was started up by the lecturers in computing and robotics, which was fun. Uh, and that lasted for that entire year. As well as all this, we, we had class rep elections. I wanted to run, but just didn't feel very confident to actually uh, take that step. So the two people who were elected left the college shortly after that. Uh, so I took over the role, uh, and that little internal kick to take action set ball in motion. The following year, in level six, I ran straight away to the class rep, uh, and the class was happy for me to continue. My lecturers directed new students uh, to me to help them acclimatize and settle to the new college lifestyle. I started a club, which really got me into the Students Association. I worked with Elena to create one of the college's most popular clubs, Robocraft, which works on programming and robotics. And then in level seven, my first year of my partnership degree, uh, I started as a class rep again, uh, still running Robocraft, and I got more invested into the Students Association due to some patternings with my department. Uh, after Christmas, I took on the role of mature students officer, uh, and as I said to my friends at the time, uh, I'm mature in age, not mature in mind, uh, which showed me the work the Student Association do for students behind the scenes, making student lives better, and I knew we wanted to uh, take a bigger role in this. I ran the Student uh, Association sabbatical elections. One, this is my second term and final year as student president, and now we're somewhat up to date with my journey. After becoming an officer, I quickly got to speed with, the, with what the Student Association does, which we'll go through in the next slide. So this is a bit about what the Student Association does. And you might be surprised to know that we do more than just events and hanging out free time. In each of these photos, there's a small story to tell. So we'll, we'll work our way around, what, well, left to right. Uh, and student democracy. So we encourage students throughout the college uh, to make change. Uh, and one of the ways they can help us do this is by writing motions. And now this picture is of uh, a class, where, class rep networking session where we got them to start writing motions. And it was, how do you like your tea? And how's the best way to make tea? And the, the example for this one was, do you put your milk in first or last? Uh, and these students put their milk in last, which is the correct way of doing it. And uh, their resolves at the end of this for their motion was that there needs to be blind pace testing in the canteen uh, so you can prove that this is the right way to make tea. And then local campaigns, 
Uh, so these are campaigns that students find important and uh, might be things that might be in uh, officers' manifestos when they run for election. Uh, in this picture, we won free hot water for students uh, so they could have maybe a cheap pot noodle at lunch in case they're going through times of hardship uh, or a cheap coffee uh, to link back to drinks. Uh, and then because of this and uh, that helped with this, uh, student officers uh, have the power to make change because they are also part of the board of management. So if things are really drastically needing a change, we can take that right to the very top. Through national campaigns, uh, we work with uh, external organizations such as NUS or SPACs uh, to ensure students are represented in devolved matters that affect them. Uh, this photo was taken uh, for the election in 2019 out of outside of the city of Glasgow uh, with the NUS campaign when students leave. And then onto events, which of course you all know we do. Uh, the big one is freshers and refreshers. I think this was refreshers when this photo was taken, which had a, a lovely uh, 80s theme. Uh, and But we also do awareness raising events for mental health and liberation areas. So just in case you didn't know, the liberation areas are LGBT, women, uh, black, minority and ethnic, disabled and mature. Then we have clubs and societies, which is really where I came into the student association. Uh, and that is a photo of Robocraft. Uh, and we help support the students set up clubs where they can gather with other like-minded students for a greater sense of community with their own education, which at the moment is especially uh, necessary when we're so socially isolated. And some of the clubs that we're currently going, uh, Fourth Valley Gaming, the LGBTQ Plus Society, uh, Disabled Students Alliance. And to, to complement that, we have signposting and support. So if a student comes up to us with an issue, we try to support them the best way we can. Even if it's just a chat to cheer them. Uh, but if we can't fix the problems ourselves, we help signpost these students to the best place that can help. And this photo specifically is from uh, Reclaim the Night, which a few students wanted to attend and is uh, regarding uh, women being curfewed at night and not being able to go out at night times due to uh, possible issues. And then on to the last one, which is class rep training. So all of our class reps are invited to attend training uh, to get to know how the college works, how to signpost their fellow classmates, and a chance to talk directly to the college senior management, uh, which comes in very useful because sometimes they don't want to go to the middleman, they just want to discuss their issue. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Elena uh, with the staff perspective, who's one of the pillars of our institutional memory. Cheers, Andrew. Thanks. Um, yeah, so that, that is a nice kind of whistle stop tour of what we do. Um, we do definitely do more than just events. And as Andrew jokingly said, hand out free condoms and freebies. Um, we uh, we have we are always running things. Um, we're always on the constant go, even through the summer when um, some staff might get like a nice summer break. No, we're in the office already planning for the next term. So. Yeah, we're, we're always busy. Uh, so for, for my section, I kind of wanted to discuss just a bit of a case study around my role and kind of how, how that works. Um, and you can kind of see the, the importance of having dedicated staff within the student association to help develop volunteers. Um, but it's not necessarily just develop volunteers, but also help develop the student body as a whole. So um, as I said, I'm the activities and volunteer coordinator not every student association or union will have one. Um, there, there are different dynamics um, throughout student associations depending on funding. Sadly, there are some student associations that can only afford one member of staff. Um, we are very fortunate to be able to afford um, two full-time members of staff and myself who is a part-time member of staff. So like I said, there's a, there's a diff different dynamic. So within my role, which was, um, as you can see here, it says prior to seven, 2017. So I started 2017 when there was a restructure within the student association um, to put more emphasis in supporting our volunteers that were coming through. So on paper, the role kind of looks primarily to look after student volunteers. So that can be your class reps, clubs and society members, um, your, our student executive officers that we have within the committee that serve under the sabbatical officers and the, the occasional kind of event volunteer. In reality, um, the role is actually so much more than that. Um, I, I probably, the, 
20 hours seems enough to kind of maybe do clubs and societies but um, I think the way because our team is small we kind of ask as much from everyone and really pull in on their experience and knowledge of what they have so me coming into the role when in 2017 um, I was fresh out of college uh, at a city of Glasgow where I had kind of gotten involved in my student association and I was very keen to continue doing that um, and I was moving to Stirling because I was going to I was going into my first year of university um, and I was like right I, I want to apply for a job in that area and this just happened to, to be there and I believe it was fate um, and it's possibly been I've always said this one of the best jobs I've ever had in my life it's it's simply it's it's different every day and I think creativity you get to add to the role is is it's so much so as I mentioned the, the role itself is so much more than just looking after volunteers like um most some people think I would just probably train and dock them and then just kind of keep up to date but it's way 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 more, more than that um I have as the activities and volunteer coordinator so I've used my knowledge and experience um to create kind of specifically tailored induction and training materials for different types of volunteers so our class reps get a training session but I also help put in bits and pieces that they would need to know as volunteers what the rights and responsibilities are within um, our student association um, so I kind of put a lot of importance because it's the college's kind of goal as well to highlight the specific partnerships that we have so either with the wider community or within the college itself so making sure that students are aware what departments are there and how they can support them and how they can sign signpost their peers to these important departments as well. Um, I've also supported this, the work the Student Association has done in the underrepresented groups or liberation groups as Andrew has explained. Um, so these areas sometimes students feel afraid to go in because they don't wish to be labeled but some people are willing to jump in with just completely both feet and are willing to really kind of help raise the awareness or knowledge to other students about issues from underrepresented students so that would be um, something I, I, I got involved in because I self-defined in those groups so I could use my personal experience to bring that forward as well um, and I've, I've taught students kind of how to run campaigns within the college to raise awareness around this. Um, also then to take what their ideas are when, if they were successful or if they weren't, they kind of can dust them off and then take them on to the national level if they feel that that is something that they could really put forward. I've created mental health awareness modules specifically for our Fourth Valley College students. Um, so I've used the model um, that relies on peer support and active engagement. So I don't just create these modules saying, right, we're gonna talk about anxiety, exam anxiety, depression. Um, I actually engage with students and let them pick uh, the topics that they want to learn about. So this, this kind of falls in to one of some of the things I do. So it'd be additional training for our class reps around the latest one that I did was around stigma and discrimination around mental illness. Um, I'm currently working on one now for suicide prevention, but students have already shown an interest to get more information about personality disorders. Um, thankfully, I have a psychology degree under my belt, so I can use that again, that skill and knowledge uh, to put that forward. And I do it in a way where it allows students to have friendly discussion around it. It's not stuffy, it's not formal. It allows students to really put out how they feel. And if they have personal experiences around it, they feel comfortable in a safe space to, to bring that forward. Um, so far, it's been very successful, uh, very positive feedback from the class reps that I brought that forward. And they're happy to have a space to be able to discuss these issues that affect them, specifically seen as students, not just as general people. Um, because the, I think the issues that we face as students are sometimes very, are very different than, than maybe what others might be experiencing as well. Um, I also represent the Student Association in various college committees. So I sit on the Sustainability Committee, the Equalities Committee, the Subcommittee, and also the Mental Health Partnership Agreement Committee, um, just to ensure that the student voice is heard at every stage. So normally we try to get students into these committees and the staff member like myself to, to mentor them or to kind of partner with them in case they're unsure, just because sometimes with age, they might not feel comfortable bringing things up. Um, so we're just there kind of to encourage them and support them in that role. Um, again, that's something I pitched within our team to try to build confidence within our executive committee members to kind of take more interest in these kind of larger community, uh, sort of the larger college uh, committees that we have. 
Um, now, as I said, the, the role is actually quite large. Um, so all the while I am a staff, part, part-time staff member, so 20 hours per week, I'm also a full-time university student in my own right. Um, but like I said, I do this role because I believe the student voice needs to be heard and students need to be seen as partners in their education. And I know those that are here from Sparks will probably love that sentence because I really get on with Sparks. I used to be one of uh, a class rep trainer by them as well. Um, and we believe that students should be partners, it should be heard and not dictated to. I think there are, that sometimes we speak to students that there are some staff that still have that men- mentality that there is a pecking order. Um, and I believe that we should move away with that. I believe students should be seen as partners, as experts in their education because they know what will work for them best. Um, I also bring a bit of activism within our team. I would say I spread that. Andrew, yeah, Andrew's shaking his head, he does. Um, I spread it to staff as much as possible uh, because I think that is something um, that is a really important trait to have as student association staff um, because we, we need to understand how student how to make students into activists because that essentially we are doing activist work within the student association and I think um, for staff that is something very important to to have um, now staff do need to be hungry for change and we need to be able to encourage students um, to campaign but but we will also need to teach them how to compromise when the situation calls for it because as much as we we try to shoot for the moon we all always land somewhere in between and uh, I think Andrew can probably shake his head and nod on this, that as much as sometimes we really want to push change, there's a lot of bureaucracy with it um, and it is frustrating, but if we make small changes, small changes still instill some hope that we can continue making changes in the future. So, yep. Um, yeah, so just a little bit further into the statistics that you see there in the first part. So um, as you will know, uh, most of your colleges uh, will have partnership agreements with your student associations. So for those that are here at Sparks, a little wing to you. Um, a partnership agreement between a college and a student association, um, it outlines a set of goals that both strive to achieve to improve the student experience. Um, the agreement normally will look to marry the college strategic plans with the student association strategic goals. Um, now the agreement sets intentions, uh, but when the what your role is in terms of staff members, so be it support or lecturing or kind of anyone in between, what your role comes in is how you can help achieve those aims. Um, so we're probably everyone here is probably aware what KPIs are, the key performance indicators and how they're user, used to measure work um, that's achieved. Now within the SA, we are a department after all. So we we do we do have these um, staff members. So myself and um, another, the other staff member there um, will choose our own KPIs. Um, and then we normally sh- will show evidence through the year. I recently had mine just yesterday in terms of how we're getting on with the goals that we aim to achieve. Um, so we, we do have these periodically. We don't just kind of work willy nilly. There is some structure to what we do. Um, they are good indicators um, for external departments. So if our principal Ken or vice uh, vice principal Kenny ask us, right, um, you know, how, how are you getting on your role? What are the things you're achieving? You can look at the statistics that I have there. So as I mentioned, prior to 2017, so before there was a restructure and I started my role, there were no clubs or societies. Um, the year I started, we started having 27 student members and we started various uh, groups uh, of kind of clubs and societies that, that students could really put their ideas forward. Um, I helped set up kind of a fund or a process uh, for student for student groups to access a bit of funding through the student association because sometimes um, for me personally, I wouldn't want to put the burden of, of funding to a student. So if they are purchasing items, for example, we have a crafters. Uh, so knitting and crafting society, I wouldn't want students to be out of pocket for kind of any materials. So we created a funding process um, for students to be able to put that through democratically, have an executive committee review the request and then send the information back. So it's very much what you would see when people are putting funding proposals across. So it's it's kind of giving them almost real life experiences to what a funding proposal is like. Um, the second year, uh, uh, 2018, 2019, again, more, another 50 student members. Um, I helped write and publish the, the volunteer policy. So there was a, a baseline for all volunteers that walked through the door, what their expectations um, 
should be and what we as a student association will offer them in return for their time, because it is very valuable, especially college students. Um, we had three Saltire Award recipients for our society conveners who put over 150 hours of their time to run clubs and societies, which is amazing. Um, and then we also created a facility for them for students to sign up to clubs and studies online instead of the standard, um, just kind of sign up on a sheet that's on a notice board. So it made things a bit more accessible for our kind of distance learning students as well. Year three, so this is kind of when COVID kicked in, it was a bit sad, but we had 38 new uh, student members. Um, I then created specific training for the conveners or those who run the clubs and societies um, and also Again, because we're in a college, there's fast turnover of students. Um, they normally will say one between one to possibly three years, depending on the course that they're doing, or if they switch courses. So sometimes leader, um, leaders or conveners might not stick around all the time, or they might dip in and out depending on what their um, work life balance is. So I had to create kind of a, a leadership sustainability process to do a handover between conveners. So there is a sense of consistency for new for existing members, but as well as so the club or society doesn't just go away after that person has walked out. And then finally, year four, where we are now, 96 new members on top of the previous members we had. Um, I created the mental health training. So that's Our Minds Matter. Um, it used to be called the Student Mental Health First Aid Training Awareness, but it was a bit of a mouthful. So I just shoved that down to Our Minds Matter, which students loved. Um, and then completely utilized Teams as a student social space. So as Andrew mentioned, the clubs and societies that we have um, use MS Teams um, as both a, almost like a forum, but also as a, as a meeting space on a weekly basis to put their ideas across. And we have seen this year in particular, because students are doing remote learning, um, the clubs and societies numbers just grow simply because they feel that they don't, they are missing out on that kind of social interaction that that would get in class um, or kind of meeting people for the first time on campus. Um, and it's actually turned out, I think, for the better because now students on in diff what would be different campuses are getting a chance to meet one another and some really good friendships have formed um, at least from what I've seen so it's 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 been good so far so that essentially is something that you would see kind of in my in my kind of review for the role so when my boss asks me how 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 do you measure your achievements this is something I would show her and she'd be like right okay that I can see that there is there is growth in this in this role um, like I said, the role is only part time. Uh, it seems every year I'm adding slightly more onto what I'm doing. So we, we hope to make my role full time to then fully dedicate to our volunteers and spend more time with developing them further. Um, now, the as I said, the, these are just kind of statistics and numbers. And while they are great, um, I think there are better indicators in terms of how we are successful as a student association. So I, I I guess I'm, I'm not a numbers person, so I don't think quantitative figures are enough. I believe in looking at the qualitative information that we get to kind of measure how much the student association really impacts the student experience. So below that, the three lovely pictures that we have are of a student and their kind of involvement they have. They, I've had with them since I kind of I've started. So the first photo there is Shannon. Uh, I met Shannon. Uh, the year I started working in the student association, so in 2017, Shannon just kind of peeked their head into the student association to ask if there anything had been done around LGBT, because in the previous college year, they didn't really see anything um, to support LGBT students, apart from being signposted to LGBT Youth Scotland. Um, and they felt like there wasn't really much of an LGBT supportive spirit in the college, and that's something they wanted to change. So um, I told them, no, nope, no worries. That's fine. This is a brand new year, fresh start. Uh, because we had a restructure within the student association, we actually have now a specific executive student officer dedicated to LGBT issues. And you'll now have a staff member that can actually listen to you, listen to you and help you build on your ideas. Um, so Shannon is quite encouraged by this. I think um, they were overwhelmed by the fact that I was so happy to, for them to kind of bring these issues forward. Um, but the good thing was that they, they got involved and they raised some issues that were quite, that were interesting. Um, for example, I think um, because at the time, the discussion around 2017, 2018, discussion around pronouns and their usage was still quite new for a lot of staff members. And when students tried to alert staff that these are my pronouns, sometimes they were overlooked. 
um, or sometimes students weren't comfortable in correcting their lectures about what their pronouns were. So Shannon brought across saying, how about we do pronoun badges? And I was like, excellent. So you can kind of see them in the second photo, um, those little buttons are in there. So they will say um, he, him, she, her, they, them. And I think we had included a couple other kind of pronouns as well, um, just as a conversation starter. So students can wear this um, and then staff, if they were on a lanyard, staff could actually see what the pronouns were and not feel kind of out of sort if, if they had to kind of use different pronouns. Um, it, it was it was both from staff and student feedback that we had. It was great. And I think that small little victory, I think, widened Shannon's um, appetite to make further change. So I kind of lured them in um, to, to be my, my intern uh, because they, they could choose to do a work placement within their course because they, their course is working with communities. Um, I managed to convince them to do kind of an internship or work placement within the student, student association kind of within my role because that's what they were really um, interested in in terms of how we worked with, um, with student volunteers. So yeah, so they... Shannon became my intern slash minion slash assistant uh, who made badges on a regular basis because they went like hotcakes. Um, then because they said, well, I'm, I'm doing stuff around the college, but I think I want to make policy. And I was like, okay, I kind of like what you're thinking because though these changes are being made, there's no set policy that will ensure they will continue. So yeah, so I was like, yeah, be an LGBT officer, come on board. And yeah, they ran, got it. And then boom, they made the A through Z LGBT guide that you see in that second photo as well. Again, it was just, it, Shannon blew beyond my expectations, made this A through Z guide that is still used today uh, by our staff and our students, especially if they hear terms like um, cisgender and they may not understand what that is. And they might be nervous about asking some people what that means. They can find that within the A through Z. Um, and it's it's been great. It's. It's something that has lasted since 2017, 2018. Um, and it's one of the things that we constantly keep getting asked for copies about because it is kind of used by, by everyone. Um, so yeah, so that, that kind of gave Shannon, it's like, cool, I can make policy. And then <laughs> I used, at the time I was an NUS officer uh, as VP Communities as a voluntary role. I was like, hey Shannon, how about you use some of that experience and jump on to NUS Scotland and see how, what changes you can make nationally? Because I think you have some great ideas as a college student uh, because they are underrepresented in NUS Scotland. Though there are more colleges in Scotland than there are universities, the way it works, universities tend to have the larger numbers. So I said, I think you have some great ideas as a college student to bring that forward. So why don't we, I help you try to get onto an NUS committee? And they did. Um, it was, they were nervous, but I said, look, uh, these people are here to support, are supporting you. They believe in the things that you're doing. Essentially, it's, it's just letting them know that you will have a, a very powerful voice to bring into this conversation. And yeah, they got elected um, and then they continued. So they were on the NUS Scotland Committee for a year. Um, and then fortunately, due to like funding, the NUS kind of had to amalgamate committees so they, they couldn't do it another year. Um, Shannon then left college, went into a positive destination, went right into a job, which was great, but it wasn't for them. I still kept in touch with them because I, I wrote their recommendation for their job and, and they got back to me and said, like, Elaine, I think some of the things you wrote are true, but they're, they're like, I feel like the position I'm in now is not really what is making me happy and I'm really kind of hating it. <laughs> so even though they were not seen as a positive destination, they felt like it didn't really marry what they wanted to do. Um, so they actually, they've come back now to the college. I, I lured them back and said, hey, Shannon, um, they're actually doing now a course in art and design and they are loving it because they're tying in what matters to them, which is mental health um, and LGBT. So the last photo there is there about art that they have um, they use in their portfolio to get into that course. They were able to put everything that they become involved in, in activism and the things that are important to them, as I mentioned, their LGBT identity um, and art and their love for art into the thing that they love most. And now they find that the course that they're doing, it's not difficult. It's actually something that's enjoyable. And they're actually now looking for opportunities out with once the course is finished or once they finish potentially going into next year, depending on what they decide to do they're excited about their future. Whereas before they were like, yeah, I think I can get a job and that's it. But now they're actually excited because they can take the skills that they developed, 
with their possession in various parts of the student association and really put that into something that they'll enjoy and feel supported uh, versus something that they could potentially be okay at. Yeah, so um, just to kind of wrap up, because I've talked forever, um, to tie everything in. So I presented the case study um, just to show that sometimes students feel like they're just another number. I mean, no offense, they do have student numbers, but um, they just feel like another number. They're just another person in, that their lecturer or their teacher needs to pass. Um, and they usually, by the information that we've received and the kind of things that we ask our class reps, they usually believe that change is impossible. Um, they feel hopeless to think to even think about volunteering. Um, so what we what we aim to do within the student association, and I guess this is what makes us award winning, is that we want to bring value to the student experience because we can offer students the opportunities to develop the skills that they already have, but maybe don't know they have, in an environment that's friendly and supportive. Um, like I said, Shannon was super shy, did not like speaking to people, only spoke to me for like the first year. And then within two years, they were out speaking um, to run for a national position. Public speaking is a thing. Um, and they have now can go out and actively encourage more students to join clubs and societies. This year, they're back as a student executive committee member. So it's they've completely changed. So by offering students that kind of supportive and friendly environment, um, we can kind of combat that fear that students have, that they're afraid to fail, to like show weakness. Um, so what we do within the student association is, is kind of help them combat the obstacles they feel that prevents them from achieving their best and hopefully instill a little bit of ambition to become more involved in the issues that affect them and, and their loved ones um, and to ensure that, you know, that their voice matters no matter the, the place. So be it within college, be it within their community, be it within Scotland, be it within the world, we want to ensure that students have a voice and their opinion is, is valued. And I think from the experience that we've had, um, from previous exec, um, from past case studies that I, that I won't go into, all of them have kind of now been involved more, I guess, in their civic duty. So as um, Andrew has kindly reminded me, we are have another slide to go. Um, so the next slide and, there- We're is, at half an hour, so we're not gonna have time for much more, so could- Yeah, this is super quick, I Thank promise. You. Um, yeah, so th this second bit is just um, a bit of information that we put across. So our um, activities and volunteer coordinator put a survey through um, to find out what staff actually know about the student association. Um, we had 10% of the staff workforce get back to us um, and this has helped us kind of create, understand where there are gaps of knowledge um, in terms of what we actually do from the staff that we work around. So from the results, we summarized these points. So first of all, please talk to us. We, we don't bite and we have freebies. We usually have some fun stuff that we will give away to you in the office. So pop in anytime. Um, we are a small team um, due to limited funding. So working with them, work with us, but don't put all the burden on us. So don't expect to do everything. We really work best in a partnership. Um, and if we have helped you on a, on a project, please credit us because sometimes because people will just take the credit for the work that we do. And like I said, it's for us, it matters quite a lot. Andrew? Yeah, so uh, seeing as we've kind of hit that time limit, uh, the rest of them are on screen to read uh, and go back to them. But yeah, please come come talk to us. It is the major one uh, and we can help out uh, where needs be. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Andrew and Ellen. Um, there's certainly a lot to think about there about how we work with student associations. Um, we've come to a half an hour, so we're going to end the uh, recording there um, um, and thank you very much um, to the presenters and hopefully you'll find ways of engaging in new ways uh, with your student, uh, student, uh, student association to make the most of that. Thank you.